Hi guys, so if I continue to procrastinate for literally another second of my day, I will probably have to put myself outside in this frigid snow as like punishment because I've just, there's some level of punishment I deserve for the level of procrastination that I have been doing for the entirety of my winter break. I'm currently on winter break from school. I have less than 10 days left. I go back on the 25th. I go back in seven days okay I go back in seven days and I have accomplished nothing that I was like thinking that I was going to accomplish during this break mainly being reading goals I had an entire month plus to really bang out a bunch of books a bunch of reading and I've just been rotting okay I've just been rotting extensively in my bed each day watching YouTube watching TV YouTube again kind of going on TikTok, just like stuff that doesn't need to be done because I can do that stuff when I'm in school but the reading is something that I was like okay I have time for hence why today I've decided that I just need to do a 24-hour readathon I did a 24-hour readathon once before and I find that they really push me to actually get like to actually finish the books okay because I just like I said I just get to distracted it's not like I dislike the books or like I don't read want to read the books it's just like if I open up my computer for the day I'm just like falling down a rabbit hole of so many things on the interweb and then I never end up opening up the book me kind of forcing myself to do a 24-hour readathon holds me accountable and also I love completing a good challenge I'm gonna do it the method where it's like you're not pulling an all-nighter okay because there's nothing that can get me to sacrifice my sleep I did a 24-hour pulling an all-nighter type video once in like 2020 and I despised how I felt for the rest of the week I start to break out without sleep I'm cranky without sleep you just don't want to see me without sleep so I will be doing it in the method where you take the timer and I just start the timer and whenever I'm reading I'll have the timer on whenever I stop reading so to eat to pee to take a little break I will also stop the timer so the timer is only going on whenever I am physically holding a book and reading it and indulging in it I'm still reading the midnight library if you watched the last video my book haul video I told you guys that I got this book and I was like oh yeah yeah, yeah I'm almost halfway through I'm in the same spot I'm in the same spot that I was when I last told you guys about it. I have not picked it up since. And it's not because I'm not interested. It's not because I'm not inclined. Again, it's the distractions. I'm really thinking maybe we can get this book finished by tonight. Like that's really big dreaming because again, it's already four o'clock and I still, you know, have to take time to like eat dinner and do all that stuff. But I'm like, I really only have like 130-ish pages left. If I just sit here, and all I do is read, I feel like I could get at least pretty close, if not maybe possibly kind of finish it. We're gonna start with this first, and then I have my Kindle Lindley, and I have Hunger Games, the book one, bought on here. Had it bought on here for so long, and I haven't started it. What I need to do is I need to pull up YouTube, and I need to get a read with me going because the only way that I'm able to like concentrate and read in my room is I need to have one of those like read read with me things going where it's got like the music and stuff or just like the ASMR it's like I'm in a competition with the person in the in the video I'm like oh she's still reading that means I need to still be reading but I've like watched kind of almost all of these sometimes they have these really like funny little am animal crossing cafe videos where it's like the little crossers i don't know what i don't know i don't know anything about animal crossing but they have it where they're like sitting in a cafe and i'm like i enjoy that one because i'm like oh my god i'm in the cafe with them anyways i think i might do one of those animal crossing ambiance this one comes with blues jazz music and ambiance so <laughs> this is where i'll be at
around 41 minutes and it's 8 30 i'm gonna take a break and cook some dinner and eat some food but i'm pounding through it i'm really just pounding through it man i don't know there's something about a combination of the blues the jazz and the timer and knowing that the timer is running that's just making me speed through it at least for my standards because i have less than 100 pages left so i'm definitely gonna finish it tonight i don't know what i'm gonna write this book i'm gonna obviously have to wait till it's finished and it's like i'm enjoying it but it's so completely different to anything else that i've ever read i've only ever read fantasy or romances or fantasy with romances and this is really like a book about the life experience and just existing as a human being with none of those other added things it's very not like philosophy because it's not it's not philosophy but it's just literally just just fiction like fiction that's meant to make you think essentially I like it but I feel like I'm waiting for this like all-encompassing message at the end that's gonna be like ah I don't know if that's just gonna be too easy and if they're gonna hand me the message I'm, I'm like enjoying it but it's not in the it's not in the kicking my feet giggling knife to the throat type of enjoyment it's like I'm intrigued by what type of message i'm gonna walk away from this book with but at the same time it's making me crave a romance book slightly so we might have to figure that out we might we, we might have to just jump into a romance book after this i'm gonna make my dinner and then we'll get back to it how would you feel about taking something other than a test like that it goes against my policy really that's where we're starting huh? it's so simple just why are these last 10 pages literally like eating me up like i I'm just, um, oh. what? what is happening? it's literally freezing outside it's snowing it's not necessarily like a blizzard but it's just extreme constant flurries the wind is blowing it's like 20 something degrees outside the weather is really weathering right now <sighs> i finished the book the time that i'm at right now is five hours and 52 minutes and i finished it last night at probably like 2 a.m something like that i was just like i just gotta finish it and i was actually really zooming through it in the end I'm zooming through it in my standards and as you can see i started tabbing her and i was like underlining i was really like getting into it i want to give you my rating now because i forget my feelings about books often if it's not a five star read i forget my feelings about the book pretty quickly which is why i want to write it down and like journal about it but anyways my rating for this i believe I'm gonna give it a four star after sleeping on it. I feel like I need to tell you guys like my rating stature. Five star for me is like phenomenal book. I had such a visceral reaction. I will think about it till the day I die. Well, actually is that, I actually really need to like put in context my rating. I think I need to write it down somewhere. That way all of my ratings are kind of the same. But like five star is like, I'm dreaming about it. It's insanely amazing. Four star, I feel like it was like, like, I had no complaints. I just didn't have like an extreme visceral reaction. Like it was a great book that I would recommend to everybody, but 
it didn't like change the being of my soul. Three star is like, I could have done without it, but it was like kind of funny. Like, I don't know, like I, it was like a car crash. I feel like three stars for me is like, like a car crash that you can't look away from. So it's like, it kept me entertained because I was like, I don't know how I feel about this. Two star and one star, I don't know. They, they kind of get combined. Like I've never rated a book a two star or like a one star because I think I just would have DNF'd it and not finished it. So like that's the concept of my rating. And then I have my six star, which right now is only the Throne of Glass series is my only six star read. If it's a six star, that means I've gotten a tattoo for it. Okay, that's the only thing that elicits a six star. So this is a four star. I would highly recommend. I really enjoyed this book. This is a new genre for me, like I was saying. I've never really read a literary fiction. I think I would classify this as literary fiction because it's there's no romance. It's literally just a fiction book with meaning and like with purpose. And I really like Matt Haig's writing style. It's very easy, very simple to understand. No like crazy literature anything like that the messaging of it still just felt very impactful and you saw at the end of it I was like I was bawling my eyes out the last 20 pages because it was just such a relatable concept that they were talking about and obviously like no spoilers the book talks a lot about regrets and like that's like an overall theme the character felt so relatable because it was talking about something that is so is such a human experience and it's such a, an experience that so many of us go through so I was just like oh and it was jerking my tears and it was just making me it was just making me think about myself which is different experience that I have walking out of books like normally I walk out of a book and I'm crying because I'm like oh my god I love the character like I miss the character I'm so glad the character's happy but I walked away from this book really just thinking about myself and I was like oh it kind of gave like self-help vibes but like in a non-annoying way and in a fiction way that wasn't forced down your throat i also really enjoy fiction books that have a mental messaging or a messaging about the human experience or kind of philosophy i love when characters are meant to ask us questions about what it means to be human and just like that study of the brain and this book definitely did that i feel like a lot of matt Haig's matt Haig? Matt Haig's books do that. He has a few other fiction books and then like some self-help books. But based on what I've seen, and I definitely will be picking up his other books. He has a book called like How to Stop Time. And they all kind of have this fantasy element, but with this theme of like psychology that I really, really enjoy. Like one of them is like called Humans and it's about this alien that comes to earth and like he lives on a utopia, but he comes to earth and he hates humans and all of the imperfections of humanity. But then it's, you know, him kind of learning the human experience. So it's like very rooted in fantasy, which this book is technically labeled as a fantasy because the Midnight Library is a magical thing, but it's not fantasy in the sense of like, mmm, fey, elves. I think my main takeaway from this book, the concepts of the whole Sylvia Plath thing. I talked about in my last vlog, so you guys, if, the, if you're new here, um, I talked about the Sylvia Plath quote in my last vlog, which the author put a quote from the bell jar in the beginning of this book. The Sylvia Plath quote is what got me to want to read this book because it talks about, or her analogy of the fig tree in the bell jar because it talks a lot about kind of how we are like the fig tree and then all of these different branches are all the lives we could have lived and each life we have like a fig and the fig withers up and it drops and each drop is a life that we didn't live because of a choice we chose to make if we didn't become a doctor or if we didn't get this certain degree or if we didn't get this master's and it's such like a daunting feeling because I feel like we all struggle with this feeling of regret. I found like the concept of thinking of your regrets as parallel universes, although it sounds insane, is very comforting to be like, there is a universe that exists where a version of me went to a different school or a version of me took a different degree in college. There are versions of this Maya that exists and she is out there in all of these different universes living out all of those lives. I am just one of the versions of the many infinite versions of myself in the multiverse, okay? We're getting very MCU here. We're getting very new era MCU, giving very much Loki. It kind of is like that, like the concept of parallel universes and multiverses. It's like somewhat of a comforting feeling. If you just think of regret and the aspect of, okay, you might have regretted not going to Europe one summer. There's a universe where you did go to Europe that summer and that girl or that person is living out that existence. That life is being lived, so all you can do is live the life of the universe that you were in. That is your only purpose, is to focus on your universe, not the other parallel universes. Oftentimes I have these regrets where I'm like, oh, like maybe I should apply to different colleges, or oh, maybe I should have taken a different major when I first started school. I could just think of it as there is a Maya out there that is at USC, <laughs> or a uh, 
freaking creative writing degree. She exists, but she's not this version of me. And all I could do is live this version of me. So that was my takeaway from this book. And I thoroughly enjoyed it. This is why I love doing the 24 hour reading, like readathons. And I'm like, should I just do these? on my own or something because there's something that my brain does when it knows I need to be like reading for a certain period of time that really makes me bang out a book. I could have finished this book in two days realistically because I finished over half of it in one day. So I could have just finished the other half. The other half could have been finished in another day. This book did not need to take two weeks for me to finish. I try to give myself 30 minutes a day but sometimes I don't know sometimes it just doesn't have the same impact as like when I'm just filming this 24 hour reading vlog and I'm like setting the timer. It was realistically five hours and then I started from page 95 and then ended at page 285. So well it took me basically six hours to read a little under 100 pages. Which now that I say that out loud that sounds that doesn't sound too impressive. Kind of feels impressive for me because like this is a book that had been taking me two like a week plus to read because I feel like also there's something about knowing that you guys are holding me accountable. I know I have to complete 24 hours of reading because I'm doing like a challenge and you guys are holding me accountable. How do I read this much when there's nobody to hold me accountable? On to the next book. After that like kind of very like existential, philosophical, inward thinking vibe, I'm kind of craving a silly goofy romance. And I know I said I would start Hunger Games and I know I've been saying that and been saying that, but realistically I'm very much a mood reader and if I read something when I'm not in the mood for it it will just ruin the experience and I don't want the Hunger Games to be ruined as an experience because I know I'll enjoy it but I just gotta be in the mood for a dystopia and after reading philosophy dystopia and philosophy are kind of in the same chord for me okay they're both about like the inner workings of humans I think I just need to not do that for right now and do a little romance so I'm gonna read the right move by Liz Tom Ford. I've been wanting to read this for a long, long time, but this is a part of the Windy City series, a series of romance novels. There's three of them out right now. They're all technically standalone, but you can read them in order because some characters make cameos. The first book to this series is called Mile High. It's like a hockey romance. At first I saw TikToks that say that like you should read Mile High before you read The Right Move, but I've also seen so many people hating and DNFing Mile High and just like not being able to get through it and people rating this so highly and being obsessed with this. So honestly, I don't think it's a big deal like I think I can skip my high and just jump into this because like I don't know how much the cameos are really gonna impact me this is like a fake dating and it's like when I'm in the mood for a romance that's like a f silly goofy fake dating I really just got to run with that because me and romance we struggle we struggle a little bit if it's not a romance to see we really struggle I really gotta take these moments when I'm feeling for like just something light to get through my romance physical TBR because I have so many silly goofy romances that I'm just like I really got to be in the mood for y'all. I would like to buy her on my Kindle simply because this book is a little stiff. This book had some good flop to it. This book has no flop to it and it really does affect my reading experience when there's like no flop to a book. It's actually 72% off on Kindle right now. So it's only five bucks which is like pretty good right? Although it is snowing and freezing outside, I have been feeling cooped up. I don't like to stay at home for a long periodically time. So I think I want to go to a cafe. Nothing too crazy. Like I'm not going into Manhattan today. Like I'll probably just go to a local cafe because you no, know, the weather is pretty insane. But I just feel like mentally it'll help me to like focus because also it's just like I just get so distracted by all my things when I'm at home and in my room. I also need to do some, like a little bit of work or like stuff on my computer. So then once I do that, then I'll just start reading. But I'm also like craving a chai and a croissant.
wore the worst shoes to be out and about in this weather. Like, Uggs are not made for snow at all. I am slipping and sliding. Oh. I was only at the cafe for like probably two hours but i have a little bit of a dilemma a, i needed wi-fi to figure out the dilemma and also i just needed i just need to figure it out okay i started reading the right move i got like 13 pages in and i already feel like i'm like missing something i already feel like there's stuff i should know that they're only giving me kind of like vague synopsis vibes of it but like i've missed it and also i don't know if i like the fact that i missed their first meeting so like apparently the first time they meet these, these main characters, like this couple, Indy and Ryan, the first time they meet is in Mile High and like they have some type of interaction. And I don't know this interaction because I didn't read Mile High. I don't know if I wanna go into this book not having read the first meeting of our main characters. Cause I'm like, the first meet is such an important thing. You know what I'm saying? And like, apparently they've had like two interactions. So I'm like, ooh, and there's also, I'm kind of confused about like, like the main character is a flight attendant and I'm confused about the flight attendant lore. Like I'm very confused about the flight attendant lore and I feel like that's something that was probably explained in Mile High because Mile High follows the sister. Did I explain it? Right move follows Ryan Shay and Indy, okay? Ryan Shay is the brother of Stevie Shay. They're twin siblings and Stevie Shay is the main character of mile high and her love interest is evan zanders a hockey player but they all live in chicago so i'm kind of i'm kind of and i'm like and stevie is a flight attendant so i'm thinking in the first one i get some more flight attendant lore and i will understand the flight attendant thing better because i'm just wildly confused with the flight attendant thing there's just many things that i'm just like i'm confused and i feel like i'm missing i'm missing something that i should know so i'm like I think I need to just, I think I just need to read Mile High. But I'm like, ooh, because also just realized Mile High is a 600 page book. A 600 page book. Look, I'm just, I'm just, I'm just, like, I'm just worried. And I've been trying to get out of the habit of letting Goodreads dictate the books that I pick. The second I see a one star review on Goodreads, I'm just like, screw it. I don't want to read it. That makes no sense because I've liked books that other people don't like, or I have disliked books that people really love. Like, I can't base it off of other people's one star, but I'm just like, I'm just, ugh. But also 600 pages of a romance? Why are we doing that? Why are we doing that? What is the reason? What is the reason? There was there was no world building needed. There was no magic system needed. But I'm like, I guess I should just read it and find out and shut up. You know what I'm saying? But, ooh. So, the right move was only 400 pages. I'm like, can I finish it? I'm, I'm six hours into my timer. Okay, I'm six hours in, so please do the math. Can I finish a 600 book in 18 hours? I don't know. I don't know what to do, but I do think, I do think I need to read, I do think I need to read it, or at least listen to an audiobook or something, because I just feel like, I just feel like there's things I don't know, like there's just things that I don't know that I should know, and they're talking about stuff as if I should know it, I'm like, wait y'all, like, like, help me understand, like, I'm confused. I was looking up TikToks, and I'm like, I feel like I can vibe with Evan Zanders. I feel like the female main character might annoy me. I don't know. I just wanted a funny, goofy romance, but now all of a sudden this is becoming like a, 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 a an, an intense series that I need specific orders with. Like at least this one's on sale too. $4.99. This is free with Kindle Unlimited. Wait, it says it's 490 pages on Kindle. I'm so confused. I'm so confused. I'm so confused. I'm so confused. Why is everybody trying to confuse me right now? 488. It says 488 on Amazon, 490 on Kindle, and then Goodreads told me 600. So who's lying to me? <laughs> who's lying to me? So I'm wasting time. I'm wasting time. It's already two o'clock. It's already two o'clock and I don't want to be up till like 2 a.m. again. So I think we're going to start my line. I need to look up TikToks of how the main characters look before I could start a romance. Because in my head, I, I really can't understand descriptions, like people descriptions in books. I just, I don't have that thing in my brain where I can 
imagined people in my in my head they all end up looking the same in my head so i need to like fan cast it out and the girls have fan casted one of them wait who's that guy who's that light-skinned guy that be in the tyler perry movies i don't know who this guy is this guy i've seen him i've seen him out and about in the pinterest lore i've seen him about i don't know his actual name but also they fan casted him as keith powers and I'm like, <laughs> so we're just gonna get started. We will be, we're just saying. <sighs> I've already spent $10 today on my Kindle. Okay, but it's okay because I, it's okay. official Spotify playlist that Miss Liz Tom Ford created for this series. I think she does them for each book. This is quite an interesting playlist. It started off with Planes by Jeremiah and J. Cole and right now we're on You Got It by Vito. That's like kind of in the back of my ear and I'm like wait what's happening? And then also this. The reason that like romance is just so like I really got to be in the vibe and in the mood for it because it just like makes me giggle and I have to be in like an ironic mood because the exposition of romance is just sometimes really funny. I'm eating this up. First five pages I'm eating this up like I'm entertained by the hockey, the sports, the rich of it all, all of that. But like the exposition of this writing <laughs> our main guy okay and this is the first five pages okay no spoiler i just need to read you this exposition because this is me sitting here and i'm like laughing but i'm like i'm entertained like it's like it's the car crash of it all in the most respectful way in most respectful way to the author it's just like you know corny that i'm just like i just gotta giggle because he's like we play it up for the media but the truth is i'm not the piece of shit people think i am i care about a lot more than just the women i take home from the arena but I'm also confident in who I am. I like having sex with beautiful women, so I'm not going to apologize for it. If that makes me a bad person, fuck it. I make a hell of a lot of money from being the bad guy. I just have to suspend a level of disbelief and just look past and not think of reality. Like I just read the Midnight Library and I'm sitting here talking about parallel universes, yes. That's completely real. Everything that just happened, completely real. This man having an exposition thought of him being a bad guy and knowing that he's a bad guy but is okay with being a bad guy because everybody thinks he's a bad guy but he knows in his heart that he's confident in who he is. It's just funny to me. Let's get back to it because now I'm, I'm intrigued. I'm intrigued. I'm intrigued. I've never read a hockey romance. So this will be my first hockey romance. <laughs> Inside Evan Zander's head is like cosplaying as a misogynistic frat boy that would definitely be eaten up alive in a feminist panel, which is wildly entertaining. I personally would want to dox and cancel him on the internet, but reading this book is just giving me a good giggle. <laughs> this guy is terrible. So morally incorrect and not in a fantasy type of way. Please, <laughs> please, what? The timer has stopped. It's been 10 hours. I need to get past 12 hours by tonight because I need this 24 hours to be finished by Saturday, which is tomorrow. So I'm like doing the math and I'm like, I don't think I could read a full 12 hours 
in one day. I'm like, I need this to get to at least like 15 or something. Anyways, thoroughly enjoying. <laughs> Thoroughly enjoying myself, okay? Having a good old time. Perfect thing that I read this right after Midnight Library because that was very deep. It was very serious. It was very, you know, thinking about the world, thinking about my existence. <laughs> I'm just giggling. I'm just giggling. I haven't started kicking my feet yet, but like some minimal, some minimal time. So I'm just giggling. I'm just having a giggly time, very unserious, very unhinged, and I'm enjoying it. I'm enjoying turning my brain off and just have my chips. These are my go-to little chips. These are corners, the kettle corn flavor. Phenomenal. I first found out about these on a plane since then. Since then, we've been married. Since then, it's just like... But I should probably like start making dinner, be an adult. But when I count my pages, I'm like, how fast do y'all be reading? Because it's been a while, it's been a while, multiple hours. And I'm only now at page 96. Like I'm only now about to reach page 100. And I'm like, ooh, I got 300 more. Like, do we think I could finish this book by tomorrow? That would actually be such a major accomplishment and you guys would literally have to throw me a birthday party or like throw me some type of party. Because if I'm able to finish this 400 plus page book in two days, whoa, whoa, no Bell Peace Prize. I had to post a timer because I got a little bit distracted by TikTok because I opened up my TikTok and they put this edit of Renee Rapp and Jacob Alority together on my TikTok for you, for you page because they're hosting SNL um, Saturday night, which is tomorrow night together. Never in my life have I been more excited to see an SNL thing, except for when Billy's on. Okay, but that's like Billy and this is having me most excited because I <sighs> there's something that's happening with my brain. There's something already that happens with my brain that like, I'm just very confused. Like I'm just like entirely very confused whenever I see Renee rap, but I'm just like, don't know what that means for my brain. I kind of fell down a rabbit hole of watching edits of Renee Rapp. Honestly, it's only seven o'clock, but I can make an early dinner. That way I could just get right back into reading. You know what I'm saying? Like make my dinner, eat my dinner, right back into reading. I feel like I just gotta insert. I feel like I wanna insert. I gotta insert the edit. Oh, baby girl. I know, that's what I said. He's so baby girl. Me, I'm a, I'm a baby girl. Uh -huh. So what's Renee? Oh, I'm, um, I'm mother. <laughs> I've literally watched it 75 times. Like I've just been watching it and watching it and it's gotten better every single time I watch it. SNL knew what they were doing. They did a big one, a perfect one, amazing one. Like how do you have, you just you just got two of the most beautiful people and you just put them. And I used to not be a Jacob Elordi, Elordi. I used to not get the Jacob Elordi vibe. Like I felt like he was overhyped over tall like i just felt like he was over 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 like i was like not into it i'm also like he dates the same type of women there's something about the clips that i'm getting from him in this snl skit and i feel like this snl saturday is really gonna change my prerogative it's gonna change my perspective because i'm just like <sighs> like i could really like he's giving very much book boyfriend he's giving very much book boyfriend vibes like why is he so soft-spoken but he's literally seven foot ten like he speaks like a golden retriever but he is as tall as a great oak tree. I know our white boy of the month currently is Jeremy Allen White. If you guys know Jeremy Allen White from The Bear, he's been cleaning it up at all the award shows. But he's our white boy of the month because of the Calvin Klein ad. The Calvin Klein ad? Yeah. Yeah. So... I'm, I'm, I'm with the girls. I'm with the girls. I'm with the girls. The girls are correct. I'm with the girls. So, and I feel like Jacob already had his time as the white boy of the month with the euphoria era. We're done with Timothy. Timothy is gone. Timothy annoys me. I don't wish anyone ill blood, but I'm tired of him being the white boy of the month. Like, let's give it to some other people. Drew Starkey. Anyways, this is becoming too much of a niche conversation, so I'm just gonna tune out, okay? And um, I'm gonna go get my package and I'm just gonna... Thank you.
words. I'm currently like 16 hours in. I have eight hours left. I want to finish the 24 hours today. Like I'll definitely finish the 24 hours today. But I also want to get this book done today and I'm 50% through. So like this will be a real challenge for me, but I feel like if I stay focused, if I stay concentrated, I can bang it out. Like I have 240-ish pages left. <laughs> but also that's terrifying because I'm like 240 pages left, but I'm like, I feel like, I feel like I'm like, that means that something atrocious has to happen in order for this to be dragged out for another two, 200 pages. Okay, let me get back to it. No distractions, no distractions. I'm at chapter 28. All I can say is Evan Zanders. Evan Zanders. Okay, I'm having one of those moments where I've kind of forgotten how to speak incoherent sentences because I've just been in a fictional world for way too long and I haven't had like a proper long conversation in a little while. Also, don't mind my pimple patches. Pimple patches, pimple cream. I currently have pimples and they need to be creamed, so. <sighs> I don't even know where to start. I don't know where to start, I don't know where to begin. So much so that I had to write a note to I was sitting on the toilet last night and then a few minutes ago and I was like compiling a notes app of things I need to say because like there's just I just there's things that I just like need to say and sometimes I forget what I need to say. Firstly, the 24 hours at this point I completely forgot about. I finished the 24 hours sometime last night, like at some point, I think it was like after Saturday Night Live that I finished the 24 hours. Proof that I made it to 24. I literally stopped it as soon as I got to 24 but I didn't mark down what page I was at. But by the time I got to 24, I think I was like 80% through the book. And I knew I was going to be finishing it because I needed to discuss with you guys like the, the final, my final thoughts on the book. I got 80% through within the 24 and then I just continued. I went to bed at, I would say like three o'clock and then I woke up today around 11 and then I've been reading for the past few hours and I just finished. I'm just so bamboozled for so many reasons. Starting off with my rating, which is gonna be hard to start off with, I don't know how to conceptualize my thoughts. Here's the thing, I need to give you a rating. And the rating that I have floating in my head is terrifying me. But I think it's because I'm like thinking too much into it, but at the same time, I don't know. Like, like I said at the beginning of this, when I read The Midnight Library, and I rated The Midnight Library a four star. I was like, that's what I feel, you know what I'm saying? But I'm like, I still don't know because I think my problem, I feel like I need to only think of the ratings within their genre or within, how do I, how do I say this? When I'm saying something is a four star, it's like there's a four star for like high fantasy and then there's like a four star for like romance because that's the part of my brain that's really killing me because realistically, I'm giving this book a five star. That's what I want to give it. Okay, I want to give it a five star because realistically, I had all the five star feeling. From start to finish, completely entertained. There was never a moment where I was bored. There was never a moment where I didn't want to pick the book back up. There was never a moment where I wasn't intrigued about what was gonna happen next or I wasn't like kicking my feet and giggling. Yes, there were some corny dialogue moments and yes, I was making fun of the exposition of the characters a little bit. There was a lot of tell not show. I think that's why I'm struggling with the whole rating thing is because 
I did not go into this book expecting a literary masterpiece. I did not go into this book expecting literary fiction that's going to have prose or a writing style that like is so profound for my brain. Like the Midnight Library. The Midnight Library had phenomenal prose that like showed and, and did not tell and really made you think about things. Whereas this, the writing style was very basic. It was very, you know, straight to the point. That's what I was desiring in that moment. So it worked. So that's my struggle. Cause it's like, I gave this, I gave the Midnight Library a four star. And I'm like gonna sit here and give this a five star. But I'm like, but it's not like I think this is a better book than the, I'm just so confused. Because if I'm comparing this to other romance books, like other books in its category, then yes, it would be a five star for my romance books. But if I'm like comparing this to like Throne of Glass, I'm just, that's where my struggle is coming in. And this is also why a lot of you guys ask, like, do you have a Goodreads? Do you have a Goodreads? The concept of Goodreads scares me because then if I make those ratings public and then I'm sitting here and I publicly listed Throne of Glass as a five star and then next to it I have Mile High, but it is a five star in my brain, but a five star in the context of other romances. Are you getting what I'm putting down? I'm gonna stop discussing this. I think I need to make the decision that ratings for me are going to be category based. Like, they're, like if I'm reading a romance book, I'm giving that book a rating based on the fact that it is in the oh. moral of the story is I'm giving this book a five star because there's no reason that I should give it anything lower than a five star and I've been keep, I've kept trying to force myself into lowering my rating but I'm like it, it, was, it was a five star book it was a five star book first of all I finished it in two days two days when did I start this Friday it's I don't know I'm incoherent. This is why I needed the notes app. Use this as an example. Use this as a learning lesson to not listen to other people's opinions, to not let other people's opinions stop you from reading a book that you possibly want to read. Because I was literally about to just pass up and never pick up this book simply because I saw like three reviews from people that like I really enjoy their opinions, but I saw the reviews of this book, they DNF'd it or they either just like rated it super low low and they really didn't like it. The reasonings I saw for a lot of people DNFing this book is because they didn't vibe with the main guy, Evan Sanders. Evan Sanders has immediately become one of my favorite book boyfriends, but if not my favorite, definitely my favorite in the romance category. Like of the romance boyfriends I've read so far, Evan Sanders is taking the cake. And I can see how people dislike him and end up DNFing the book in the beginning because he's very much arrogant, asshole, cocky, selfish. Ugh. Now, if you've watched Gilmore Girls, the perfect way to desive, describe Evan Sanders is like Tristan Dugray. If Tristan Dugray was given a chance to really have a fleshed out storyline and dated Rory at a point in time. You know, Tristan Dugray is not for everybody because yes, he's an asshole. Yes, he's a rich, you know what I'm saying? But He's also a simp, also a major simp. And Evan Zanders is so simp. He's so simp. He's so, he's so baby girl. He's just, he's just, he's just so swuffed. He's just so swuffed and just so cute and adorable. But at the same time, he's an asshole. And I just love that in fiction. I can understand why people didn't vibe with Evan Zanders in the beginning if that's not the type of book boyfriend that you want to commit to but girl when i tell you i was invested in evan zanders from the beginning there's something about reading an asshole in a book that i'm just like tell me more there's something about watching a tv show about an asshole that becomes less of an asshole because of a girl giving very much damon salvatore like it realistically would i want to date david salvatore no he's kind of a dick he's kind of a dick like he was kind of a dick to elena but he does everything because he loves Lena. Like it's just that type of vibe. It's that type of vibe. Like it's the type of vibe like I bully you because I'm in love with you. Ooh. So highly and thoroughly glad that I kind of just went on my own accord and I didn't let other people's thoughts deter me away from reading this book because then I would have missed out on a five star book and one of my favorite book boyfriends and just like a phenomenal experience. Evan Sanders is an intentional king. He's an intentional king. The first time I read a romance book was Allie Hazelwood's Love Hypothesis. And that kind of put a sour taste in my mouth because I knew a lot of people love the Love Hypothesis and really enjoy it. And I just, I really pushed through it, but it was just like a, a level of corny that was just too corny to be corny to me. Like, it, you know what I'm saying? This love story just felt 
so realistic because it was just so messy. It was just so messy. But at the same time, just simp. But also like messy. Also there is quite a bit amount of spice in this book. So please don't read this if you're under the age of, I don't know what age, but if, I don't know. There's a lot of spice. Let me check my notes app. Oh, and then I wanted to say, so reading things on my Kindle, first of all, definitely think that I read faster on my Kindle. And also there's something so satisfying about reading on a Kindle and somebody, like I saw a TikTok of a girl and I was like, this is it. It feels like I'm back in middle school reading a Wattpad book and highlighting sections and writing notes where everybody's like highlighting the same section and writing notes because like it's just so easy to highlight on the Kindle. You saw me highlighting in the physical copy of Midnight Library. It's a little bit tough like I gotta get the highlighter and then I gotta get the pen and then I gotta write the note. You know it takes me out of it versus with the Kindle I just like tap highlight and then I'm sitting there giggling and then I write a little note to myself. It's fun because then I could go back on my notes like where do I find my notes? Most of the notes were just me highlighting something and then writing hot because I was like Evan Zanders hot but it's just like it's fun it gave very much Wattpad and I miss those days of Wattpad when we would read a book and then everybody's highlighting something and then we're like talking about it in the comments like you know what I'm saying and they also have the option on the Kindle or not the option the thing on the Kindle where like you could see a line that's been highlighted by like so many people and show like this many people highlighted this and I'm like yeah girl <laughs> I was getting ready to do it too we're just twins we're just twins <sighs> that was a great experience I want to jump right into the right move I want to jump right into it I already woke up this morning and I ordered the physical copy of Mile High so it's coming tomorrow that way I can transfer my annotations immediately <sighs> immediately it was just <sighs> last things and then I'll let you go firstly I think at first it is terrifying and I hear a lot of people talk about the length of this book and when I was reading the Goodreads comments everybody was like there was no reason for this to be 400 plus pages there was no reason for this to be so long yes there was because I love when a book when like a romance book especially really gives us time to sit in the couple and really gives us time to experience the couple because how am I supposed to root for the couple if I've actually never seen them be together and I've actually never seen them interact in, in an official couple way, how am I supposed to know they actually work? How am I supposed to believe that I'm just supposed to believe that they end up happily ever after when they just finally told each other they love each other and it's like there's no coupling, there's no coupling. Like do you even know, do you even like the way that he washes dishes? I don't know, I don't know and I don't believe you, I don't believe you. I enjoyed the length of this because I liked the more, I liked the mundane moments, I liked seeing those and also I enjoyed the childhood trauma aspect of this book. This book really went in depth with childhood trauma and how we carry those into our own relationships. And I was like, ooh, ooh, queen. This was a good one. I've never had a romance book make me cry. And it wasn't like insane tears, like the Midnight Library. I'm also just kind of an emotional freak. But it's like, it had me crying for certain moments with like, character relationships not the romantic relationship but like familial relationships like parent relationships parent relationships really just get me get me into tears I was like crying for that because I really went in depth with that and I liked the emphasis on like working on yourself before you can fall in love with someone else or like loving yourself before you can give yourself to be loved by another person you know what I'm saying like I just felt very real mm, felt very real and realistic and the more that I read romance books, the higher my standards get. And the more I think I probably will just end up single. Because if I could just keep reading my little fiction book where I could get somebody like Evan Zanders, why would I put up with somebody that don't even want to get me flowers? It just doesn't seem like good math. It doesn't seem like good math. I think that's all I have to say. I think that's all I have to say. I got through two books. Very proud of myself because this is the most I've read. Honestly, like banging out two books in one month. Normally it takes me a full month to read one book. Um, so, you know, this was no simple feat for me. And I'm proud of myself. I'm proud of myself. And honestly, I think I might even get three books done in January because I really do see myself sitting up here and binging the right move. Because if people, people hype up 
Ryan Shea expeditiously. And I'm like, if Evan Zanders was a character that they didn't even hype up, I am dumbfounded. Like I am itching to see what a character that actually is hyped up is like. Because I'm like, my expectations are already up. Also you guys, I forgot to mention the book club has started. I've officially made the book club. Here is the Instagram page. I know some of you are saying that you don't have an Instagram. So basically I wanted to make the Instagram because it's the easiest place for me to put up polls and voting for us to vote on books. I will also probably be putting up like the final vote for like the final book that we choose for the month on the YouTube polls but for like the little polls like picking our tropes and picking what genre and picking all of that stuff it's just easier to do it on the Instagram story polls so if you do have an Instagram definitely follow there to join and keep up with that if not I will also be making a fable account I will have these things like linked down below and I'll put them in the comments but I'll be making a fable account for the book club and it's a free app that you can download and basically we could just pick a book there that's where we can like discuss and chat with each other and it'll be kind of like a group chat but also if you follow the instagram we will be having like a live meeting which is really just like me going on live on instagram live um at the end of the month and we discuss the book so we're still currently picking the book while i'm talking about this so i don't have it in my brain but i will announce it somewhere that you guys can see it and we'll be starting that beginning of february and then we'll be meeting on live at the end of February. So yeah, more information is like on the Instagram. So I'm sorry to those of you that do not have an Instagram, but the Fable link will also be linked in the description and the comments. I'm gonna see you guys. Good night. Thank you.